How's it going? There we are. Well, everyone, um, welcome to everybody who's tuning in online and to those of you who made it out in the storm and everything else to be here today. Um, I get to say that today I am your preacher, your presider, your candle lighter. I'll also be doing cartwheels later and standing on my head. Um, it's just that kind of Sunday for everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Fillier and I'm a preacher today, everybody. And right over here is Mr. Tony James, who's on the keys, our Minister of Music. And uh, yeah, we just want to send our love out to our amazing volunteers uh, who are going to be part of today's service. Uh, Matt Murphy wasn't able to get here. Gloria Churchill wasn't able to get here. Pat Watson wasn't able to get here, right? It was that kind of week for us all. I am sure, right? And we just, it was lovely, it was said during the cantata last week, someone wrote on the, uh, the online chat for Facebook as they were just like, you know what, isn't that faith? When things don't go according to plan, you just pick yourself up and keep trying, right? And that's what we're doing. But I do want to say a really amazing word of thanks to all of our volunteers who were able to help us in a major pinch this week. Uh, we quickly had to make a bunch of pivots love that word these days, uh, to doing online worship uh, for a couple of the Christmas Eve services, and everybody I called, you know, Jason uh, from his bed after surgery was like, yeah, I'll do the video editing. Nick Fieldson, I call him in the middle of the night and said, could you do this? They're like, you don't even have to ask, it'll be done. Uh, we have an incredible community, our AV team back there with Paul and Rob and Brian, all of our welcomers that have come out to make sure everybody's safe and spaced and we're following all the restrictions. Which at BUC, we've always done even more than the Department of Health has asked, which is also true today. So friends, just thank you, all of you, uh, for being amazing during this time. And we'll get through it. We always do. Um, I want to uh, also give thanks for, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but one of the discussions in the office this past week was we were saying, if we are going back to restrictions with social distancing in church, we need something more festive than green painter's tape. And so we went to our amazing seamstress in chief to Karen Parnell, and Karen spent about, what, Karen, like nine hours doing this? She's got some amazing uh, white and red, beautiful fabric, festive fabric to kind of put up. Looks a lot better than having the green painter's tape X's. So can we get a round of applause for just like all of our volunteers? They are amazing. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Um, before I invite Leanne to come forward, she's got a very special presentation to make to us. I just want to offer folks this quick word. So what will happen is that our 4 and 7 o'clock services originally for Christmas Eve, we had all this planned. We had all this done. We were finished. We were early this year. Uh, 4 o'clock was led by our Sunday school, and 7 o'clock was led by our junior leaders. And they're the two most vulnerable populations right now. So we made the decision this week to say, you know what? Uh, we are going to pre-record the 4 and 7 o'clock services. So 4 o'clock is now going to be a combined pre-recorded effort for Sunday school and junior leaders. It will be awesome. There will be so many wonderful things. Regenesis is going to be in there too. It's going to be an awesome service, so don't miss it. The 7 o'clock will also be pre-recorded. It will be another encore presentation of our fabulous A Christmas Hope Cantata. Woohoo! Maybe... Maybe with a little fireside chat with Mr. Tony James before he launches you into that. But for copy reasons, we had to pull it down off our Facebook site after we were done. So lots of you out there in internet land missed it. So this will be an opportunity to, uh, to see it. And if you're gathering on Christmas Eve around 7 o'clock with your family, it's just gorgeous music to put on while you're all gathering together as well. And then at 10 o'clock... We are going to do an in-person communion service, uh, as we usually do for candlelight communion. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Diane Tingley is going to be leading that one with some of our key volunteers. And uh, we normally have a very small turnout for that one. I expect that will also be true this year. Uh, but it's here as a way. If you need that in your spirit to be in church on Christmas Eve, we can only fit 100 in the, in the uh, sanctuary. And um, there's no RSVP. So just know that up front, but if you'd like to make your way out, uh, we'll be here. At least today, that's what we're saying, <laughs> right? As we know. So Leanne, after all that, you have a gorgeous gift for this community, and we would love to invite you to come forward and say a few things about it. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> 
On behalf of the BUC UCW team lead and our three BUC um, units, fellowship, fireside, and friendship, we'd like to present the church with this check. Um, uh, it's been hard this year because we haven't been able to fundraise, and so it's a very minimal one this year, but it is what we were able to get together for. Once again, here we go. Thank you so much, Leanne, and on behalf of everybody who's BUC, we would not be here. Someone said, you know, Matt, we've been pretty strong during the pandemic. Yeah, we've had our challenges, and Leanne named a key one, which is, of course, for any charity nonprofit is fundraising and keeping everything going. But we would not be here in so many ways without the United Church Women, without these three dedicated units in all the ways. Leanne was saying, it's been a hard year, but they've also improvised. They've gotten things online. They've done online worship. They've, they've done it all. They've pulled out all the stops. Leanne, from the bottom of our heart, to all the women, we are just so, so grateful and thankful. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Yeah, I can do a whole service. I haven't done one of these in a while. This will be fun. All right. Friends, as we gather on this Sunday of love, as we discern what it means to live into the birth of peace that the Spirit brings, we recognize that peace isn't just the absence of conflict. It's not the absence of discomfort or challenge. Peace is not found in the silence that privilege brings of saying there's no room except for one story, one history, and one perspective forever and ever. Peace is found when we prepare the way. And we make room for our siblings in the great spirit to be heard, for their story to also be told, and for our great story that we share to expand, to deepen, and to honor everyone. So at Bedford United Church, we recognize that we live and we work and we worship on the lands of the Mi'kmaq people who have stewarded this land for the last 10,000 years and continue to do so today. In the spirit of all of our relations, we work for peace and for truth and for reconciliation among all people, and especially with our indigenous neighbors. May it be so. <laughs> Friends, as we gather together today, and I was thinking about the theme for today, uh, I came across this, this lovely piece Darkness is an interesting word for us in church, let alone in the time in which we find ourselves, let alone in Advent. And Morgan Harper Nichols posted this beautiful piece to worship leaders. She said, as you lean into light, be gentle with the word darkness. For um, it means more than just something that's wrong or bad. It's also the color of a full starless night and actual bodies of human beings who have been overlooked so many times. Many, many words hold more than one meaning. So today we'll be thinking about the sacred and beautiful dark of God. And we're also, we're going to center ourselves in this way. People have been talking a lot about the darkness they find themselves in. Well, okay. Let's gather together and fully arrive in this place. So I invite you to plant your feet on the floor if you're at home or in church, you know, and just kind of ground yourself in that good ground of the rock beneath our feet. Just relax your shoulders. Be comfortable. Be easy in this place. We got a whole lot of room for social distancing in here. We're fine. And I hope you are too at home. And just close your eyes, and we're going to breathe together. And when we inhale, I'm going to invite you to just ponder this thought in your heart. As we breathe in, say to your soul, I can wait through the darkness. And as we exhale, let's ponder to ourselves, there is holy here too. Here we go. Let us breathe in and hold it. I can wait through the darkness. Let it go. There is holy here too. Breathe in. I can wait through the darkness. Let it go. There is holy here too. One more time. Breathe in. 
I can wait through the darkness and let it go. There is holy here too. We gather in Advent to wait for that angel song. Let's listen for that sound that reminds us we are not alone. We are not alone. We remember that as we gather here, all are welcome. And all the time. Friends, let's pray together. Glory to the Holy One, who is the source of all life, and on earth peace and goodwill towards all people. By God's grace and Mary's trust comes the light of ages and the hope of nations. Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. With silence and song and stories of faith, we make room in our lives for God's limitless love. Holy One, open to us the door of the stable that we might look in. Guide us to the stables of our world and renew within us your vision for all creation. May it be so. Amen. Friends, as we gather to light the candle of love this week, uh, we did something special. We reached out to a friend of ours, a member of this congregation, who lives in Ontario. Uh, Emo Yango does some amazing work uh, with our national church, and he and his partner Kathy have roots here in Bedford and in the Maritimes. And so I shot Emo a note and said, you know, you could pre-record lighting the candle over there, and we'll just do it over here. But we got to find some way for you to like hang out with us and for everyone to see you. So we're going to hear from Emo and Kathy now in a moment, and Tony is going to guide us in singing that beautiful song together. We've been singing Open Our Eyes during Advent as we light the candles. Open our eyes to the wonder of the season. Open our hearts to your love. God of the universe, we are dust within such vastness. God of the baby, stars and angels sing your praises. Open our hearts to your hope, God. Open our hearts to your peace. Open our hearts to your joy, God, and open our hearts to your love. Open our hearts to your hope, God. Open our hearts to your peace. Open our hearts to your joy, God, and open our hearts to your love. of hope, peace, and joy. This week, we light the candle of love. Love isn't just about warm, fuzzy feelings. It is something bigger. Love is how we treat one another, and how we treat one another is the clearest expression of what we believe. As we trust that Advent ends in the new creation, as we do what is right to bring peace, as we respond with joy to the call of Advent, we are called also to love one another. Like the first disciple of Jesus, Mary, his mother, we are called to participate in challenging power wherever it dehumanizes and silences our neighbor. We're called to feed the hungry and to scatter pride wherever it looms over our neighbors and to care for and stand with those who are suffering, calling always for justice and love in the name of the kingdom. Love is not an either or, it is something bigger. We are called to both receive the love of Christ and to offer it. 
And as we light the fourth candle of Advent, may we learn to love fully and completely as the human one has shown us the way once more. Open our hearts to your hope, God. Open our hearts to your peace. Open our hearts to your joy, God. And open our hearts to your love. Good morning. It's good to see you. And good morning, everyone at home. We're just going to sing a couple carols. You've been asked not to sing today. We're back to that mode. But you can hum. Remember when we used to hum? And we're going to do Sonnet Night. And Sonnet Night's a nice little carol that you can... It sounds nice even when you hum it. So go ahead, hum it. call myself a tenalto because I'm somewhere between a tenor and an alto. Even for me, first thing in the morning, that note up there is like, oh, I climb to get up there. The first Noel we'll do next. The first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fear
let's go to verse 3. And by the light of that same star, three wise men came from country far to seek for a king was their intent and to follow the star wherever it went. Let's see if I can hear you hum now on the chorus, okay? And we'll only do, do those two verses. Here we go. Mm We got to give this guy a round of applause. This was supposed to be a Sunday off. <laughs> I got to tell you, everybody, the whole staff team, all of our volunteer leadership, like, man, people have pulled some wild hours and uh, really rallied. And it's just amazing to see the, the strength and the resilience of this community. So thank you, Tony. Uh, for doing that. We'll make it up to you, buddy. We will make it up to you. Paige is furiously working in the building to get ready for pageant pre-recording that's going to follow immediately after the service. <laughs> right? Like, we're going to slog in some fun hours, everybody. It's great, though. It's Christmas, and we're going to make Christmas happen for everybody. And speaking of that, there is peace in this place, and we've been passing the peace during Advent. We're going to do it a little differently this morning instead of folks kind of wandering around. But just take a moment. You know, if you're at home, wish everyone peace online in the chat. Uh, here in church, we can namaste, right? Spirit of me, my friends, honors the spirit in you, right? And may the peace of Christ be with you all. So let's just turn to our neighbor. Welcome, everyone. I know we're a little far from each other here in church. We feel your love online. We feel the good stuff. It's great. All right. Lovely. Okay, my friends. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to share with you a couple of videos. So during the Advent season, we've been hearing from Greg, who's a wonderful minister in BC in our church, who's been doing these really cool, Greg's got like this outdoor church, uh, and we asked him through Worship Collective, a United Church group of worship leaders, to do some videos for us for Advent. And his reflection this week is entitled, Wisdom and Preparing to be Part of Something Big. And that's our theme for Advent, right? Being part of something bigger. So we've been following Greg week by week, so he's gonna intro well, it's two pretty incredible conversations. So we're going to hear from Mary and Elizabeth. Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. These two women meet, right? And they have a conversation about what is going on within them. And this leads to a song called the Magnificat. This is Mary's song. It's the prelude that she has as the first disciple to what the life of Jesus will be all about. So we're just going to sit back and relax. And it's all going to work, right, Brian? <laughs> Sometimes knowing what needs to be done and doing it are easy. Sometimes, like can happen in pregnancy, the wisdom is all in the body, as long as everything goes smoothly and everyone's healthy. Other times, meaning and purpose are more elusive, like what are we supposed to do now? We compare our skills and gifts to the needs of the world, and the alignment doesn't seem to be there. So we discern. We contemplate. Perhaps in silence. Perhaps in conversation with other people. Maybe we watch videos. And we rest. And as we rest, we also prepare. Prepare to jump in and do that which the Spirit is asking us to do. To be how the Spirit is asking us to be. 
to contribute to something bigger than ourselves, something so great as to be described as the kingdom of God, where all are known and beloved, just as we are, where there is fairness for all people. God, the Mighty One, does great things in us. Let's be part of what God is doing now. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. With those words in our hearts, I'd just like to thank my black colleagues for helping me write this this week. Darkness, darkness everywhere. Fear the darkness, every child, everyone of every age, everywhere. Run for the hills, lest the darkness snare you, bind you and isolate you here. Darkness is the color and the shape we often twist and turn to when we lie awake at night, warping our anticipatory anxieties into self-constructed nightmares of fright. All this darkness is getting hard to swallow, and maybe it's the lack of kindness and compassionate curiosity that is leaving our spiritual fields fallow. Maybe like the Grinch, it's not our heads, but our values that aren't screwed on quite right. Darkness, darkness, everywhere, every channel, every night. It's the perfect shade for the director to cast a villain, a way to transform a human being into something we can hate. A plague, a pox on our house, an evil, a foe we must fight. Ever notice how the fires of our greatest fears never seem to burn quite white? Darkness. To trim anxiety and hang a face of fear, stalking street checks and racial profiling on the shelf 
next to the toilet paper in case the pandemic buying response to the complex complexion of human skin written in the not yet reconciled sins of colonial history leaves the powerful and privileged feeling bare and exposed. A rose by any other name? <laughs> Darkness, like conspiracy theories, is often just racialized code. And what about the darkness of inflated supply chains sucking up the oxygen of the spirit's breath for a stock market rally exhale that moistly greases the pockets of big and bigger business interests? What about the darkness of mental illness and addiction that's all locked up in the we don't talk about that, mm, but we sure fund it through an incarceration system that pounds the pavement, gathering in more and more darkness. Who needs reconciliation when you can renovate and build more and more prisons? What about the darkness of loneliness that steals hope like a thief in the night? who is determined to break in lest we bar the way with blue light endorphin <laughs> booster shots of Zoom, FaceTime, and Facebook Live. And then there's the darkness of the unhoused, the poor and the hungry who have taken up permanent residence, leaving no room in the ends of mounting restrictions, rapidly testing collapsing public systems by seeing just how many overworked angels we can fit on the pin of a pandemic endemic pivot that makes everybody's head spin spin and spin like wherefore art thou angelic christmas chorus a fear i've lost you among the covid 365 24 7 siren song dirge of it's the end of the world as we know it and i feel frustrated and like really really tired how easily i forget it came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Y'all know the one, the good news we're all here for that all these prophets have long foretold. In this time of waiting, when all our hope is on hold, in the blackness of a womb, Darkness is not the grave marker of sin and death, grief and loss, evil and fear. Darkness is the harbinger that brings tidings of good news and great joy, of the holy dark that bears the divine into being right now and right here. When I lift mine eyes onto the uh, James Webb Space Telescope and gaze through the open gate of time, I see this universe rife with life explode across deep and lush, dark, sublime. Without this infinite darkness to hold it all together, where would these little balls of blazing light spin and shine? You gotta wonder, where is this awful darkness of which people so often speak? I don't see that kind of dark out there. What I hear in here is actually that we're afraid of a future that's bleak. From the darkness, the angels did say, don't be afraid. Light is born with the darkness. Without it, in the Big Bang beginning, says the sacred story, nothing, no one would ever be made. If you feel like you're in the dark this morning, then good. Because it's in the sacred dark that the holy takes up residence and becomes enfleshed and literally moves into our neighborhood. Sacred dark is your holy neighbor, right next door to your grief and your loss and your anger and your bitterness that threatened to wilt. The breath of God you got left like something that went bad and needs to be tossed. You need to spit that bleakness out right now. It's like a piece of rot between your teeth that needs to be flossed. Regardless of whether the lights burn bright on the tree or whether we could go home and visit family 
Or there's too much room this year at your table. It's in the darkness that Emmanuel comes from Mary's womb, not some fairy tale stable. It's not darkness or blackness that describes the void that we see. It's a bleak midwinter forecast for the future without end. That's what weakens our knees. It's into the gale force winds of a future that's bleak that Elizabeth and Mary speak and they sing. This song magnificent is born in darkness. It's from the first disciple of Jesus, his mother, that the gospel of the human one rings. Darkness is the incubator of life, not a tomb. Out of the womb of mothers, God is doing something new. In the vulgarity of the flesh of marginalized and racialized women's bodies is born a conversation with consequences that are without end. Their pregnant words are rarely heard in public lest they offend the ears of virgin men. Caitlin Hardy Shelter did write of how these two women in full public view speak of having milk stains on their shirts, the expulsion of blood and smell of sweat, the salt of a mother's tears onto the soft head of the salt of the earth, feeling lonely and tired, hungry and annoyed, overwhelmed and loving. Love? Wait, what? Back the truck up. Love in this instance? Yes, because love is true resistance that begins with people confronting pain and wanting to do something to change it. As Bell Hook said, this is the kind of resistance that upends bedridden bleakness and in joy is a blessed let it be so that stands on its head. Mary and Elizabeth were willing to stand and turn facing the bleak of pain, of uncertainty, of a pandemic of injustice and violence to change the world by doing something about it. A 14-year-old girl with child, without a husband to appease, those who would stone her to death for the decision to do with her body as she and the divine would please. She's traveling alone, along a social margin of certain life and death that is thinner than a razor's edge, hyperventilating, forget ventilation. Imagine holding your breath for 40 weeks like Mary instead. And Elizabeth? An old woman who has long passed the years of childbearing, who has been judged unfit by herself and so many people around her to bring life into the world. Because menopause was understood as a restriction that denied she be considered a whole person unless she met the social and cultural role of male heirs to provide. It's these two who are anointed, these two different generations, these two queens staring down the barrel of an uncertain future. They confront the pain of the world with darkness in their womb and light in their eyes and through them the spirit births a new beginning. This is not the advent unwrapping of an Amazon delivery at your door surprise. This is not the soundtrack of Hallmark Christmas movies. This is the song of revolution, of a resurrection of the human heart, of the shadow of our mother's wing sweeping away the bleakness, and in its place, the saving shelter of love imparts to human hearts, and the dear human one enters in. As you cast your eye to the future in front of us, maybe the bleakness feels impossible to put behind us. Good. Let me make sure the hearer and the reader both have understood our humanity cannot be reduced to being an incubator for some virus. We are part of something so much bigger that's awakening inside of all of us. It's in the bleak midwinter of the impossible that God's love comes upon a midnight clear and is born. Bell Hooks wrote that when we face a future that's as hard as iron, when it all feels fraught 
like it's coming apart at the seams. And I quote, she wrote, love redeems. Despite all the lovelessness that surrounds us, nothing has been able to block our longing to love, the intensity of our yearning. We can't account for the presence of the heart's knowledge. Like all great mysteries, we are mysteriously called to love, no matter the condition of our lives, the degree of our depravity or despair. The persistence of this call gives us reason to hope. Without hope, we cannot return to love. So, pandemic people, the moment is as pregnant as ever. Are you willing to return and hopefully stand in their place turning into these gale force winds of bleakness and together face the pain. For faith, hope, and love, these three things still remain. And the greatest of these is love. For we weren't born to lay down our burdens and run for the nearest fire exit. We're born to take up our cross and fair follow Mary and Elizabeth. We weren't born for a bleak midwinter. We were made to change it, to lift the song our great-grandmother sang. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the heavenly strain have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. O ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow, look now. For glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. O oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old, when the ever-circling years shall return the time foretold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling, and the whole world give back the song which now Two Jewish Palestinian women the whole world had written off will write a new future for every single one of us to sing. Merry Christmas, everyone. And in the holy dark of this December, may tidings of good news and great joy to you, Emmanuel, bring. Spirit in me honors the spirit in you. And all the people said, Amen. It's still a mystery to me That the hands of God could be so small How tiny fingers reaching in the night Were the very hands that measured the sky Hallelujah, hallelujah love reaching down to heal the world hallelujah hallelujah son of god servant king here with us you're here with us it's still a mystery eyes had seen the dawn of time how his ears had heard an angel's symphony still Mary had to rock her Savior to sleep hallelujah hallelujah heaven's love reaching down King here with us 
so much, Tony. Friends, let's gather our hearts, our spirits in prayer. Let's pray together. God of hope, hear us as we pray for your world and your people. For those who will spend these days alone. For those who will not have enough for a feast. For those whose tables will have an empty place this year. Lift our hearts in anticipation of your vision. Sing a song of the sacred dark, rejoicing in the lonely heart. God of peace, on this Christmas time we pray for the people of Bethlehem, of Israel and Palestine, for refugees who have nowhere to lay their heads, for those who find themselves in strange lands, for those who are unhoused in our own backyard and across our country, for those whose bellies are empty, for those whose hearts long to be filled with more than just anxiety and a side helping of grief. Watch over them and protect them. God of the morning star, guide all people in the ways of mercy. God of joy, open our hearts that we might receive you and hear your voice. Open us to the possibility of true change in us and others. Remind us of your promise, made again to each generation of your forgiving and transforming love. May all things be reconciled in love and with justice. God of love, heal the wounded heart, humble the proud, and lift up everyone who struggles to rise. Reconcile us one to another in our homes, our families, and our communities. Remind us this Christmas season of your love for us, revealed in the child of Bethlehem and revealed again in all our hearts. Remind us that the clearest expression of what we believe is not what's written on a page. It's how we treat one another with the life that you have gave each of us. Let us rise from this place filled with the spirit of love that we would make this word flesh in the choices we each make this week for the sake of something that is so much bigger. In all your holy names and in all the beautiful languages that speak them, may it be so. Amen. Well, friends, we thought about passing the plate. We gave it a lot of serious thought. I went, boy, it's going to be hard to pass it. There, there's we're going to need some really long arms. So we're not going to do that this morning. But our offering is going to be received right now. For people who are in person in church today, there is a collection plate there on your way out, and we certainly invite you to share with what you have of the treasure that you can today. 
And at home, of course, like if you're able to make an e-transfer, if you can help us by signing up for pre-authorized remittance or short church speak, we call it PAR. These are beautiful gifts. We appreciate all our envelope givers who continue to drop those off in the mailbox, you know, each week. We're really, really blessed. And we know it's a hard time for everyone. We invite you to give what you can while you can. And all of us give not only of our treasure, but this place is filled with gifts of talents and incredible amounts of time. And for them, we are so thankful. Friends, let's say a blessing for these gifts that have been shared in this community to bring love and justice and hope and spirit into the world. To the stable, we remember, each brought what they could and each gave what they had. The animals their warmth, the shepherds their awe, the wise elders their gifts. To God's world and God's people, we offer our gifts with the same love that God shares freely with us, with the same love that Mary and Elizabeth shared with the world. Amen. We are going to go tell it on the mountain, aren't we, Mr. Janes? We sure are. And you are, you're just going to belt her out, aren't you? I sure am. And we're going to watch you do it and listen to you do it. <laughs> at home, we hope you're singing like no one's watching, like you're really belting it out at home, right? Like, you better be. You better be on our behalf right now. You can clap your hands, though. You can. Right? Now, there's three verses. Your hands might get tired, so, you know... Keep all the good clapping for the chorus, unless you want to clap all the way through. <laughs> Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds camp their watching over silent flock by I should get you to stand if you're able because I can see people kind of bopping in your seat and you'll have a little more room to bop if you stand, right? <laughs> or sway or rock. Down in a lowly manger our humble Christ was born and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Here we go. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. hands. <laughs> right. Friends, I invite you to, uh, to be seated because we have a blessing and then we're going to sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas at the end here. Lots of people are traveling. Some folks won't be able to make the Christmas Eve services, so we want to do that. But before we get there, uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this one. All right, we're going to do this one. I'm, I'm not going to screw it up. Uh, this has been uh, really fun uh, to do during Advent. We were like, we're going to do this body prayer for the blessing. My plan was, 
I knew Matt Murphy was doing worship every week. And I was like, I'll make Matt do it. It'll be great. And uh, he's had so much fun doing it. Lots of you have seen him do it with like, you know, his microphone. He's got a clipboard. He's still, sometimes it might be a kid in the hand. He's trying to figure it out. Uh, Bruce McCullough made it famous on Advent One. And Bruce and Matt, they did a lovely duet, didn't they, Tony? They really ended the cantata quite well. They're watching, and I'm going to get emails about how I did. So here I go. <clears throat> all right, are you ready for this? We all ready? At home, I hope you're ready. Here we go. All right, I got to loosen up. All right, here we go. Let's go from this place today trusting in the voice of God whispered in the soft brush of wings, trusting in the hand of Christ, offering help when we feel small, trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit that reminds us of a larger story. Go in peace. Amen. I totally did it, didn't I? Yeah, I totally did it. All right. I got one. All right, good. All right, Tony. Wish us a Merry Christmas, would you? We all need a Merry Christmas. That's what we need right now. I personally like the wings. I, I, you laugh when I did the wings. I just about, that almost tripped me up. Supportive colleagues. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings to you, wherever you are. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in person and online. You'll see us online again on Christmas Eve, 4 o'clock. We will be airing that amazing service, gathering up our Sunday school and our junior leaders in pre-record only, so there's no in-person. Then at 7 o'clock, we got our encore, A Christmas Hope. And then at 10 o'clock, there is in-person communion, and that one will not be streamed. So there you go. And just so you know, the 26th of December, it'll be like Matt and Tony homemade jam. We'll be like on an iPhone live streaming pre-record, I don't know. It'll be the Matt and Tony show. It'll be great. It'll be fun, Mona Tony. We'll, we'll have fun. And then uh, we'll decide how we go from there. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you. See you soon.